Hello, everyone. This is Smoke Dragon 2 here. Back from a, well, I guess a real long time making a video. Uh, I have a, well, well, I got off my job, so I decided to make a video. Uh, this is, as you can see, the Hacy Knight. I don't get paid for this. This is not by me. This is uh, by. Give me a moment. This is made by Maxi Modena, Sandra M. MJ Dev team. Um, and I think it's pretty good. I mean, I've played it a little, I've played it a little bit, and it's good. It, it's really good. It's really funny and really entertaining. So, uh, let's, uh, let's do this, shall we? Start. Not load. Start. Start. New game. Holy horns! <laughs> <laughs> What's up with this place? It's ancient. Are you sure we are allowed to be here? And as you can see, it is voice acted. Well, except for this. You're allowed to be anywhere as long as no one finds you. Sneaking through forgotten cracks in a wall is not as easy as it once was, but I still managed to push my hat and my staff in somehow without wrecking the wall any further. Today's a mess. And the last thing I'd want is the whole city knowing that I'm back on my nonsense, namely helping fawns trespass into abandoned temples in pursuit of fixing the written lies that pass as the state is <sighs> I'm too old for this rubbish. I catch a glimpse of Len's expression as I push my scarf over my face again. My newest headache looks entirely unconvinced by my logic. Look, we're already here and you're going to need all the help you can get, kid. I don't have time to explain every single little thing to you. If said kid still has any qualms left about following me here, she has the rare decency not to voice them. I mean, the whole, this whole ordeal is her fault. In her roundabout sort of way. Still her fault nonetheless. It's annoying, but... Mine, at least. If anyone but mine, anyone's but mine, at least. Dang, I can't even speak. I didn't come all the way back to this city to do charity for his descendants. I just wanted to find that dumbass's grave and clean up a little, or leave some incense. Something. Not 
this. I wasn't looking to hear legends about any so-called knight of that upper field. I know the book in this library won't say a word about him, but I had to come back to this place anyway. And un the unlikely possibility of finding a trace of his existence among the broken tablets and burnt con co this is was uh, are too uh, compelling to ignore. Here I am, still following in his footsteps, like the few unlikely scripts that time and thieves spared, frozen in their shelves as uh, they await the return of someone who will understand them we have lived we have a lot in common this library and i the kid's eyes uh, open a fraction wider and i only managed to narrowly avoid the incoming onslaught of questions hey hey ink paper you can write right of course! You're talking to the fastest! Shut it! Ask it as. Sheesh! You're really adding some flavor to my name, huh? Where did all that salt come from? Or could that be the sweetness of an old flame leaving such a bitter aftertaste? Uh, you know! Don't do that. It makes you sound like your mother. I mean, her mother. Or her great, great, great grandmother? Yeah, I can't believe that the story has derailed this much. How long have I been gone? I can't even start to guess if you won't tell me how old you are. I'm entirely too old to care about something as dumb as numbers. Well, gee, I'm starting to see why you wanted me here. Do you have a name, or are you too cool for letters, too? My name would only doom this project. You will be me, and I will be nothing more than the space between words. What a droll way to say you want me getting lynched for this! I can still keep the story to myself and tell you to get lost, kid. But you won't, because after hearing my name, you realize I'm the chosen gazelle that Legend of Old Prophesied would tell the true story of the night, right? Uh... The fuck? Uh, I could use a little encouragement here, I'm not gonna lie. If you want encouragement, call a self-help line. I'm not here for that. Listen, Lynn, I don't believe in chosen ones, and I certainly don't know what the truth is. I doubt Adder himself even knew. But I am going to tell you the story I know. I will tell it once. And I will probably tell it wrong, since I can barely remember it anymore. But even so, anything I say will be a thousand times more accurate than any of the odes uh, this witless bunch of uh, folk doodles have been singing through the ages. <laughs> anyway, this may be Adder's argument or lying his way into history, but I still can't let the name of a friend be smeared like this. So what I mean 
to say is that I will skewer you if you interrupt me and make me forget something. Understood? Fair. She finally shuts up for a moment, though I know the silence is last. Right, good. I guess I should put my own thoughts in order before we begin. His story starts back when he left his village to... No, that would be too long. His story starts when he became a knight and... No, that defeats the point. I guess his story... Well, I guess his story starts with this. I could allow myself that much, Mare, right? Who are you again? I'm the one who tells the story you write. Okay, all right, here we go. Chapter one. Chapter one, the fickle queen, or what better way to start a story than when things are about to go south. Adder. Hey lad. Do we have to go through this every single fuck? No! <laughs> That's all of me too. Oh boy. Here we go. A beast! Oh. Adder than tree. Golf than tree. A beast. I saw a beast! Encyclopedia. Skip. History. Replay. Back. Replay. I saw a beast! Skip. Auto. Save. Quick save. Quick load. Menu. Way to call me an eyesore. I'm telling you. I saw a beast. You can pause if you want to read. I already read that. Return. Ah, I said return. God dang it. Okay. Right. Look, I'm not drunk enough for this, so good. This ain't no time to sleep. The beast may be gone, but the Makadar is still out there. Makadar? The forest out there has come to find me. And you stop screaming like an idiot and use your brain for a second. I knew they'd get to the city one day! We gotta tell everyone! Yeah, the, uh... The image y'all are seeing... Probably is not shaking as bad as uh, the as it originally is. Good lord, you should play this game and find out for yourself. He's shaking up a storm. There are no damn trees around you, dimwit! A long sush followed right after. Or that's what we'll go with since the Birds their dear neighbors used were too colorful to be reproduced. Oh, then what did you holler for, Mr. Bard? The sun ain't up yet. If you don't quit your whining, we're gonna get a beaten. Says you, the buck who hath been delighting mine ears with his pitiful wailing, all night long. Say what? Say like what? You've been talking in your sleep again. Oh. My word. Beast! That was no dream, all right. I saw the thing with my own two, with my one eye. 
got its face right in front of mine, and it was looking at me like it wanted to eat me. Are you sure that wasn't Dana? Say what? Say what? I mean, she can be very aggressive. I wouldn't be too surprised if one night... You think Boss is trying to eat me? Deer in a headlights look. Yay. O oh, fairest in the kingdom, what hath thou seen in this dull head? Wait. Fair? Fair. Fair. Fair? Oh, three. I guess they have three. Don't. Goddesses, like three deities, like the. Like. The Elder Scrolls have nine. Oh, don't. The fire! I swear to bite that kid. If you keep screaming, I'm going to kill you. Not if they get to me first! And so Adder's heavy hoof stomped the ground with the force of a stampede as he sprinted away, making Gyalf. Gyalf. Regret every decision that let him that led him suffering this torment. Glad we sorted that out. Wide awake now and running as fast as his clumsy hooves would let him, Ador set off to the bazaar. A whole year had come and gone since he'd first set foot on the streets of a slender district. The most infamous slums of the capital. A place so heinous that walking there alone at night was considered a suicide attempt. A place where you were in your right to keep a house if you could outlast its previous owner. were where he'd once felt like a poor fawn fearing for his life. Now he felt like a poor deer fearing for his life. But at least he actually knew his way around after such a long time avoiding friends. He had no time to spare worrying about trivial matters such as being robbed or stabbed for he knew fully well that he was to meet his destiny. <gasps> the page was gonna skin me alive! A destiny which most likely didn't really include being played by his dearest employer. Though he... Though we can't rule out the possibility of his uh, direct superior whacking him in the head for oversleeping on such an important date. <laughs> what if she hates me now? Then the patron won't have no problem kicking me out. you kick me out keep my skin as a payment. Nah, that's dumb. But he'll kill me anyway! Oh crap, 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 crap! So immersed was he in these uh, fatalistic thoughts invading his head that his brain, which was by all accounts mostly, mostly made up of uh, sawdust, didn't pay any mind to the path his host was following. Crap, 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 crap! And so, as it, as to be expected from someone not heeding a wise advice, look where you're going. He soon met his first obstacle in his, uh, in his way to the plaza. A wall. <laughs> In any other place, that sort of chuckle 
would have meant that Adder wouldn't have the benefit of living with his failure alone. In the slums, it could mean that he would have that he wouldn't have the benefit of living at all. <laughs> that was almost impressive. I truly thought that you were going to run straight through that wall for a moment. <laughs> the voice got close by a second, followed by a strange a melody that danced in his ears and paralyzed his mind, rendering him frozen in the spot at the thought of an incoming murder. Adder shut his one eye and held his breath, knowing that it would be fine. Not dead yet. Still not dead. How come he was still alive? That's just between his uh, blur blurry sight and the obfuscated darkness. Adder could barely tell apart the silhouette standing right in front of him. He should have run, screamed, and for his life, but. Long enough for a few stray sunbreak to wander along the run-down houses, finally casting light upon the town. Whoa! For your information, everyone already thinks that Rose are thick scald. We don't need another martyr for the cause. Adder absolutely laughed. Adder's absolute lack of reaction made her mocking smile falter. To be fair, he had indeed left a sizable hole in the wall he just crashed against. But that was hardly the case for his sudden drop in a mental speed. Are you okay? Adder not. Mysterious being a mysterious glass extended a last extend a soft hand toward him in an ample gesture. Take her hand. What? Are those? What are those? What are those? I know they're short. Please don't stare. What kind of nonsense is that? I'd never seen hands like those before. My hands? You like my hands? Were you born with them? How much weight can you lift? Can you use tools at all? Or wear a shirt? What's wrong with your neck? Is that a hood or a scarf? I love the pattern, by the way. That's a lot of questions. Um... So... I'm sorry, ma'am. What was the question? You. What are you supposed to be? Oh! Well, uh... I'm just your run-of-the-mill prairie buck, ma'am. Just, you know, my mom gave me shovels for hands and a gourd for a neck. They're better for work in the fields. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on. I want the act- You- You want the born, miss. Okay. See, I used to be all big and strong. But then I come to the city and what do you know? Food ain't so easy to come by. I was so hungry that I'd even eat the rocks of the street. And I go to bed hungry one night, 
and another, and I keep on starving till I end up two meals short of turning into a walking pile of bones. Except for my hands. <laughs> they just won't get. And they're for real heavy, let me tell you. So, that's the gist of it. Want to hear about my neck, too? Or my name, at least? The girl's eyes narrowed as she stared at Hatter. He fixed his gaze on his hands and he turned a strange path of the conversation. So, what you are saying is that you used to be plum? Plum? Like fruit? Well, I used to eat a bunch of fruit before I came down here last year, yeah. Last year? Wait. How many eyes did you have then? How many? How many? Five, I think. I, think. <laughs> I lost the other four. <laughs> uh, no. Just the one, ma'am. I knew it. You've changed a lot, but it's you. You're that loudmouthed when I chub. Uh, say what? It's me. Don't tell me you've forgotten me. Uh, go had warned Adder multiple times about the dangers of the It's Me scam, but he was pretty tempted to fall into the Ma'am! I don't know what you're selling, but I ain't gonna buy it. <laughs> Come on, don't you remember that night on the bridge under Hirab's statue? With the guards laughing at you? You didn't hit your head that hard, did you? I bet those guards had one haystack of a night laughing at some poor buck. I'm pretty darn... <laughs> I remember you. Tr it was a pretty long time ago, but... Wait, I know. She bit her lip. Just long enough to make Adder lose Come closer. Who? Me? Almost asked the deer. Yes. There was no one else. I said come closer. Oh, he's very demanding. All right then, here I come. <laughs> That's it? <laughs> come on, don't make me walk over there. <laughs> Boop. That's oh. close enough. Uh, she slipped right under Adder's arm. Uninvited, but not welcome. Now, if you could get on your knees, I... Shaking um, alert. You know what? Maybe you should see a doctor after all. Yes, very much shaking alert. He is shaking like a he is shaking like a leaf in a hurricane. Joseph, there you are. Oh, give me a break. In less than a blink, her smile was back on her face as she turned to face a voice in the distance. It was some other note. In similar flashy clothing, hurriedly stomping her way towards her. Jassif, apparently. You called? We've been looking everywhere for you! And so you found me. Congratulations. Now, if you don't mind... Miss Rochelle's had us searching for hours! She wants you back immediately! Well, I'm kind of busy, so... Would you be so kind to go tell her to find someone else to bother while I catch up with my friend here? The fair's about to start! Head back already or you'll get us all in trouble! The red-haired girl stood completely still. She held her breath for an instant. I'm sorry. Was that an order? What? I... Miss Rochelle said... Say, do you know what happened to the last wench who had the gall to order me around? Jessie's smile was still plastered on her face, but her 
those horns? No, you know. Yeah. You know exactly what you can do with those horns. The doe looked for her uh, doe the doe looking for her stammered color drained from her mane. After a few tense seconds I passed her down. A pleased smile spread across Jesse's face. Come now, honey. Don't make that face. I'm just joking here. I've got too much going on as it is to begin picking fights with my sisters, don't you think? Uh, <laughs> right. Then that's settled. Let's go. Jessie whipped her braid as she turned around sharply, making the pair of bells hung from her hip announced her plea. Adder had barely just a second to make sure what happened. He could swear something had moved in the corner, but he couldn't care less. The, fine, the finest lass he laid his eyes upon his whole life was about to disappear and she seemed to have forgotten all about him. Facing up to the prospect of a Wait! I... Yes? But as Adder was about to speak, he had the same feeling of missing something. And so, as the game shifted, following her back. Tess really hoping that he wouldn't find what he found sprouting from the top of her red head. Corn, black, the hot corn, At her, and her yelled internally. Beads of sweat him, falling from his face. There's no way I. But as if he needed to do what he had made his internal turmoil, a seat smiled his tongue with a mischievous glint in her eyes. <laughs> 
Don't worry. I'll see you around. Handsome. Adder was so, so midnight. He was crook. He was goofy. He was loud. Smi he had a smile that could light up the whole town. He was gigantic. And yet, if there was a thing, he'd never call himself. He'd never call himself. It was no doubt. He does eat, although he does have some hand song. <laughs> yeah, I know, bad joke. <laughs> After all a bug's work, Almost childlike. So, the off-handed insinuated that someone found him good-looking made his part play. And by Flutter, I mean it may as well have burst out of his chest break. Right Whenever you see him jostle like that, it means he's shaking like like a Richter scale whenever it whenever it senses a five point no earthquake. You ever seen that needle? So for uh, the one second he forgot that the lady in front of him was born for a moment. He forgot all the things he'd heard about gazelles. His face turned red. His jaw came loose. But had he been able to articulate, he'd have found he'd completely forgotten the ability to talk. He still knew how to do one thing, though. Run! Ah! <laughs> this time, his shame was stronger than the wall, and he ran straight through. Wait, what? Stop right there! What was that last bit? The bit about the wall or the gaz... Oh, I see. Ruminants hasn't always been so successful at, live, at living together as they are now. Whores, gods, corn shape, all the excuses that we used to make a lot more sense. No, I know that, but there's no way the knight would have thought something so awful. Adder was a young, un- Secure stag in a time when every bow felt the need to deny having a single drop of bond blood in their veins. Why would he think any different? Why wouldn't he? That's the point, isn't it? That he was different from the rest? How could he believe any of that crap? How should I know? I never had anything against gazelles. Sounds like you weren't a whole lot bothered by those who did, though. You're right. I wasn't. I just thought that there always had to be someone to punch down on. And I spent all my energy making sure that would never be me. That was the world I saw, and I never hoped it could be different, never wanted it to change. Adder, though, I think he never, I think he never meant to do that to anyone. I think he just hadn't realized that there was more to the world than the fears he'd had been raised with. He had to 
butt heads with more than one type of wall and his life. I could be wrong, of course. His understanding could have been yet another pretense, and he may have very well lied about wanting to fight with the rest of us until his very last breath. <sighs> no, I'm sure he did grow to be a wise and kind man, Len. Much wiser and kinder than I ever was, at least. Neither of us would be here making excuses for that dumbass otherwise. Well, I don't care about you, but he'd better rise up soon. I have high quality standards for my ancestors. I'm glad you do, kid. Now, where were we? The sun was already up in the sky by the time Heather managed to remember that he was supposed to be at the bazaar. Oh, I'm so, so, so sorry. I didn't mean to arrive so late. Please don't kill me. But, lo and behold, there was what do you know? First again! <laughs> I'm gonna have to ask for a raise at this rate. Oh, hold up. Now it's time for that. Andy could get here at any... Dun dun dun. Dun dun dun. Ha! <laughs> gotcha. You're gonna end up giving someone a heart attack if you don't quit sneaking up on people like that, you know? Don't you think for a second I forgot I was supposed to prepare the stall? <laughs> no, ma'am. But, you know, days are getting longer, and it's harder to sleep at night, and uh, the streets are real crowded, and... Uh... Anna, Anna's silent glare told him that she didn't believe a single word, but she didn't care enough to pay to pride. Hey now, quit giving me that look, Missy. You got here late too. She pointed at her hair dripping drops of silvery gray water were dancing on her tips, painting the ground up beneath her. And how is it my fault that you were busy dyeing your hair? Leaving him with that perfectly valid question unanswered, she walked back and picked up a big bag she'd left a few steps away. She left it up with a single hand, lifted it up with a single hand, dang it, and then headed toward the stall, closely followed by Adder. It was around that time that they began working. A sudden thought popped up as he helped her set up. So, uh, how come the patron ain't here? It just don't be the two of us today? Hmm. Anna simply <laughs> You won't tell your pa I got here late, right, boss? killed the conversation. People from all over began congregating in the bazaar, turning the walled plaza into a sea of spice, trinkets, and deer. The currents of that sea were still difficult to understand for Adder who often found himself pushed to the ground in the busiest hours. 
day would be a little lively. It was the beginning of the Johnson season. And so the festive Ichen had to sure it. Well, to did a well to the rain cloud, so they be back again by the end of it. A pleasant change from a hatter usual day to day. Under the continuous risk of suffering a heat stroke or third degree burns. Or welcome, welcome! We got the best prices in town! Come on and see what goods we offer! There was no reaction whatsoever to his insistent yelling. <laughs> Other than Anna's snickering at him for trying so hard. Sure must be fun watching me break my back so your dad won't yell at us. <sighs> All right. With a long sigh, Ana sat up and cast a tired glance over the carpet. She reached, she reached out and grabbed a small shiny bag. After checking its sharpness against her glove, she began stabbing the air as possible customers approached the stall, attempting to showcase the juice. <laughs> Edder quickly put his hands over her shoulders, You know what? I take that back. There ain't no deer in the world that works harder than Ana of the Test. There just ain't. A hard worker like you deserves a good rest every once in a while, so uh, just let me take care of this, boss. He did his best attempt at a natural smile. Ana, who couldn't care less about any of this, simply shrugged and sat back, still wielding the knife. She let her hand fall on the stones that paved the bazaar and effortlessly tore it from the ground. Deciding that it served better as a shelter. You do you. And that's what she did. It was best to leave the issue alone. Adder had figured out quite some time ago that Anna was a creature of habit, and her habits included steadfastly refusing to put any effort into anything she didn't care about, but it never really bothered him at all. There was something fascinating about watching her get completely absorbed by whatever task she had chosen to focus on, really. Adder never quite had that level of dedication to his craft. If he even had one, she could hammer tirelessly at a single hunk of metal for hours at a time if this if the piece required so, all while judging Adder's every movement with the same intensity. She was just as capable of sitting in a corner and glaring away at the hours while she sank down and sank deep into her own imagination. That's why he immediately knew something was off when she turned her face away from the dull knife of her own accord. Huh? What's wrong, boss? Wait, is that... Oh, no, 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 no. Don't tell me he's coming this way! And with that cliffhanger, we will leave this episode here. If you liked it, please leave a like, comment, subscribe, something. 
or if you didn't, tell me what I'm doing wrong. Tell me what you don't like about it. Is it my voice? Is it me? Is it my attitude? I don't know. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. And me, Smoke Dragon 2, will catch you later. Stay safe out there, everyone.